hate to be the bearers of bad news, but sources close to us tell us there is no Coastal Carolina theater coming to this area. If you're a tax-paying Myrtle Beach resident, this should upset you. Our city government promised us if we put our taxpayer dollars into this building, they would deliver a tenant, a leasee. Well, the leasee's backing out. We'll show you what that means for this area to have this vacant, big eyesore right here in the middle of town where the merchants were run off. The merchants that were here were all run off. Here's what your Opportunity Zone tax dollars bought you. Your investment in this building, now with no lease has four sale signs going up and down the property. Less tax base for the city. They're not living off of this tax base, however. They're living off of the taxes from these oceanfront investors. By charging them twice, three times, four times the village, they're charging local residents. And also charging them tourist taxes, which they split with the city and the chamber, and also charging them a business license. It's no skin off the back if the city doesn't lease this property. But now what we have is your tax dollars invested in a facility downtown called the Superblock with no leasee in sight. The city's been big on promises. For 20 years, the DRC's promised something here, something downtown. Here's what we have. Lowe's Foods sent a press release this week stating this store behind us would be closed as of the end of this month into August. This Lowe's Foods is in the north section of Myrtle Beach, one of the most upscale neighborhoods. There's a neighborhood to the north of it, running all the way to the ocean front. There's the Grand Dunes neighborhood across the street, the Dell Webb neighborhood just behind us. There are Lowe's food stores, one on International Drive across the street, one in Surfside on 544, on Myrtle's Inlet in 707, and one in Polly's Island. None of these stores are closing, including the one in Little River. This is just another high profile closing for the city of Myrtle Beach. Rumors are that the property was forced off by Burris and Chapin because of a lawsuit. No one knows if that's true or not true. Those are rumors. Regardless, it's five o'clock on a Friday. The parking lot is 20% full and the store's slow. Those are facts. Questions are, why are so many high-profile stores closing in the city of Myrtle Beach? The numbers are in. From 2013 to 2018, if you opened up a store in Horry County, you had an 80% better chance of, of surviving than if you opened up one in the downtown city area of Myrtle Beach. And that includes from the Carolina Opry is all the way down to about 17th Avenue South. Market Common is the exception. If you open up a store in Market Common, you were more likely to succeed. All concrete and mortar businesses struggle. Most close, most small businesses close a few years after opening. However, it is especially hard for a small business to make it inside the city limits of Myrtle Beach. It's Friday afternoon. 5.30ish, 5.40ish in the afternoon. This is your typical parking lot. We're on 48th Avenue. Right behind us here is the, the ocean and here's the parking lot we talked about. We've had local residents film these parking lots ongoing. They're always empty. I realize it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but how many people from Carolina Forest would have driven over here, gone for an afternoon stroll after work, and then gone back and bought a hamburger, a sit-down restaurant meal, or stopped at a local grocery store had they been allowed to park here. This money is no skin off the DRC's back, the DRC being the Downtown Redevelopment Corporation. They weren't, they weren't charging for this parking spot to begin with, and the fact that there's no revenues here isn't hurting them. No revenues here, no county customers here is killing downtown merchants. Now, that doesn't hurt the DRC. Those are new funds for it. 
what that hurts are stores like this. Stores like this are hurt when county residents can't come here, spend the day on the beach, and shop. There are other issues, which we will discuss. There are other high-profile closings right here in this north end expensive area. Now, I want to be very, very clear, because the city of Myrtle Beach will probably put out some response saying they have 18,000 businesses that are always operating and haven't closed in decades. Folks, those 18,000 businesses are individual condo investors who bought a condo on the ocean front. While the city considers that a business, we don't. We consider that an investment. The property managers who manage those businesses, that's a business. There's five of those, largely in collusion with the city government. Those, those individual condo investors, however, are not businesses, despite the fact the city sending them a $250 business license and collecting on them. The reality is, is this is a brick and mortar business right here. This is a brick and mortar business. This brick and mortar business is closing despite an affluent neighborhood all around it. And for those of you who would scoff, this is among one of the best grocery stores in Myrtle Beach. It's Friday afternoon, middle of July, six o'clock in the afternoon. This grocery store is open, serving outstanding food. It's one of my wife's favorite. In fact, if you're a local, I would recommend you, you shop here. Question is, can these higher end grocery store chains live off of three night budget Myrtle Beach tourist business?